dog sight. Tell me I've been in that living room all white. I'm up all night, season ends while niggas sleeping. Not so many guys, guess why I'm breathing. We keep it strong as the name live on. Like if they was never gone, mind blown. And even my head is Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the Grit Culture. Let's talk about it. So you have the Rachel Nichols and Maria Taylor situation that's been taking place over the NBA Finals um, during the you know which has the Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks. They've been battling it out for the championship. Uh, this will be the Suns' first championship in. In years since, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Oscar Robertson. No, not the Suns, sorry. The Milwaukee Bucks since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Oscar Robertson and then the Phoenix Suns. This will be their first championship ever. Be their first championship ever. Now, they've had a couple cracks at it, uh, you know, back in the 70s with, uh, you know, Paul Westfall who just passed away. You know, a couple other guys. I believe it was the Celtics that they lost to. Um then you have uh, then you have you know when they fell to Jordan in 93 with Barkley so it's been an entertaining finals uh but the Nichols and Taylor situation has been hanging over it, it hasn't completely overshadowed it but it's definitely been a storyline that's been discussed amongst you know alternative media meaning social media here on here on YouTube and so I want to to provide a little insight on the situation so of course uh if you don't have don't uh, if you don't know last last year there was a conversation that was recorded between rachel nichols and lebron james advisor um, and in this co recorded conversation rachel Nich nichols rachel nichols expressed her concern about espn approaching her over her job uh, you know, her job as, you know, being an analyst. She was currently the analyst uh, hosting the show, which is, you know, the pregame, the halftime, the postgame show. And they wanted to move her, you know, move her to where Doris Burke was being a analyst on the sideline, you know, interviewing the players, you know, during the game, the coaches and after the game. And move Maria Taylor to where Rachel Nichols was currently at. Now Nichols has that has that show hosting the finals and she also hosts her own show The Jump that comes on, a basketball show that comes on during the week weekday. Well Nichols was like I said, she was displeased about it and she had a few choice words to say. Um she basically said, you know, she believed that this was a diversity move given everything that was going on and followed what happened with george floyd uh all the activism that was taking place at that point during the nba bubble i mean you saw it and so it was just the timing now a lot of people are calling rachel nichols a racist because of her comments that that was made let's talk about it. let's address that so me personally I don't believe that's what it is. I think what Rachel Nichols did was just made an observant theory on what she believed, why she believed she was being replaced for a job that she obviously wanted and liked. You know, no matter if, you know, the job that her taking Doris Burke's position was, a, you know, a higher position or something that, you know, was looked at it with more prestige. The job that Nichols was currently holding was a job that she wanted and she wanted to maintain her place in. And so, you know, the she what she pointed out was ESPN's history of, you know, mistreatment and, you know, mistreatment toward women and black people and different things like that. And so, you know, all of a sudden now you just have this complete change of heart when it's convenient, when you see all the other corporations taking place within the same thing. I mean, it, just, it was just widespread. You know, black people had been protesting and voicing their concerns about, you know, workplace treatment and how they tr treated out in the world, all type of different things. And 
now you're seeing all the corporations all of a sudden jump jump to and get on the same page after the George Floyd situation. Now, that being, they only deal with black folks and only give voices to black folks who honor their certain agenda that they want to, you know, basically basically taking place with, you know, one to be hand in hand with the government and receiving the hand, not handouts, but dep dependency on the government. Whereas, you know, a person talking about self-sufficiency and doing away with different ways of the system, you know, they get put to the bar back burner completely. And I'm talking about, you know, real ways of doing away with the system and putting it back in the citizens' hands. They only deal with black folks who meet that certain criteria and speak on the agenda that they want them to talk about, right? And so, yeah, so all of a sudden they're just, you know, they're back and everything and ESPN is making this change and, you know, all the black people that they fired and let go, I mean, just countless, countless, countless people, you know, from the Jamel Hills to the Michael Smiths to you know, Rob Parkers and, you know, just back to back, you know, they've let it go a lot of people. Uh, and now they want to make these change and it's at the expense of Rachel Nichols' personal job. Um, I believe anybody would have a problem with that. I believe anybody would have an issue with that, you know, whether you're white or black red, green, yellow, whatever the hell you are. You're going to sit up there and you're going to theorize on certain things on what you believe why they would be making such an abrupt decision, especially given the timing of something. And like I said, it's not, it wasn't done in a malicious way. All it is is asking questions. And it was something that was done in private. Most people have all type of conversations in private. And a lot of shit people say are much, 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 much worse than anything that Rachel Nichols said. Rachel Nichols just asked a few questions. It's something that if you got half a brain, you believe that's a that's a viable thing. We know how the corporate world works, especially dealing with the media and everything like that. We know that pretty much everything is agenda based. Everything has an agenda about behind it. And so why would it just become so foreign, so foreign of a concept all of a sudden to even grasp? You know what I'm saying? Why would it become a foreign concept? They have been doing stuff like this forever and you wouldn't put it past them. So for it to be a, you know, that's most things, you know, you go to a lot of jobs. A lot of people are on because they're diversity hires. And so, you know, even if, you know, but let's let's flip the roles. Let's say if it was a black person and they were bringing a white person on like they do at so many different corporations and jobs. I've seen it. The white person may be qualified, but of course the black person, they're not saying that they're not qualified, but they want to ask the question. All of a sudden, you know, you're just forcing me out of my position and putting this white person in. And it may not be the case, but the person's going to ask the question, is it because, is it because of, you know, racism? Is it because, you know, you favor the white person over me? You know, given the history, given the history, there's something that it's references back to. And so it's the same with Rachel Nichols. She's referencing everything that's taken place at that time and all the changes that were happening countrywide. And that was consistent with that. I mean, just look at that. All of a sudden, you're starting to see, repre uh, you know, quote unquote, representation in, you know, movies. You're seeing it on advertisement. You're seeing it everywhere all of a sudden. And anybody could sit there and look at it and say, this was forced. Black people talk about it. We talk about it all the time. This shit is forced. And all of a sudden now they want to start singing, you know, lift every voice and sing and singing, you know, the black national anthem before games. And they had never done this before. Uh, all the times black people have been voicing their concerns 
and the voice in their displeasure with what's going on in this country and how we've been treated in this country. And all of a sudden, you know, it took George Floyd, all the other stuff that's been happening, you know, stuff that even happens even past George Floyd and, and even past, you know, black people have always, you know, had, you know, they put laws back in the day that the government, it was government sanctioned discrimination against black people. So don't get it twisted. But, you know, it happens to everyone. A lot of people are being abused, you know, cops killing people unfairly and it's happening among all races but you know uh you know it's really up to everybody to bring light to every single one of them that happens but you know we tend to we tend to bring spotlights to different things that are happening in our particular communities so if it's a problem those particular communities not even saying race just the communities those neighborhoods they have to bring a spotlight to that they have to get out and protest even a lot of the protests the things that you were seeing that were happening last summer they weren't organic you had a few ones that were ha around that were happening that were organically you know that organically rose up but for the most part a lot of them were <sighs> government ran even the the riots and everything like that you know you had different just people behind the scenes pulling different strings and so it's up to the people to, you know, bring shed light to that. But this is stuff that, you know, people have been out in the streets for a long time uh, doing and it's gone falling on deaf ears. And so all of a sudden, you know, you have it happening, you know, just certain things, you know, I've talked about it before, but certain things, you know, you know, it's, it's the timing. It's the timing and for them to start pushing different propaganda type of things. And this is all, you know. So Rachel Nichols, Rachel Nichols had every right to ask that question, especially when it's a job that she values and it's a job that she wants to keep. You know, all the conversation about her feeling entitled and everything like that. I mean, you know, entitled to what? You know, it's one thing if she feels like she should just take somebody else's job and requesting the job because she feels like she should have it above the other person. But it's something that she already possesses. So what she wants to do is, like anybody else, fight for something that they want, a position that they're comfortable with. Now, you know, of course, she lost it. And, you know, she's been doing sideline reporters. So eventually, she, you know, she she played the game and did whatever, you know, played her position. But, you know, she that doesn't mean, you know, people ask questions all the time. People are going to hold objections and all type of things. They're going to ask questions when something just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem natural. Uh, doesn't seem natural at all. So, um, now one thing you should be asking is, you know, about LeBron James' advisor talking about how he was tired of, you know, the whole BLM and everything. And, uh, you know, but, you know, a lot of people are a lot of people are just going along for the ride and just uh, just playing the game just playing the game so they can get their little pennies and get their dollars that's what it, you know a lot of people are doing so they're going to play the whole corporate role they may not agree with nothing that these people nothing these people are talking about i have no reason what is ish i i don't know what his issue is with blm uh i don't like blm because they're a fraud they're a fraud organization. You know, they don't represent, you know, change for black people. They actually setting setting black people back, to be honest. Uh, and I've spoken about that in many, many videos. It's just propaganda and it's, you know, the white supremacy that everybody speaks of. They're a product of that. They're a product of that and they're funded by that because they have a... They want to push, you know, things like Marxism and, you know, the whole communism. This is what they go with. But you understand that dealing with that, you have to have full cooperation with the state. And I thought the whole thing was to be moving away from the state and becoming self-sufficient within our own communities. So this is the total opposite of what guys like Malcolm X and the Elijah Muhammad's were speaking of. The complete opposite. 
So, you know, there's a, that's a, like I said, that's a whole nother conversation. But I don't know what his personal gripe was about it, but he's definitely not saying that. And, you know, does LeBron James feel the same way? But they're definitely not saying that, you know, out in the forefront. They're not saying out out in out in the forefront. They're all along, all with it, and they're gonna go along like Kwame Brown says the the whole go along get along gang and all of that. That's all it is. Go along to get along so they can keep cashing those checks. So none of this shit is. None none of it is real. None of it is authentic. None of it is authentic. It's a bunch of microwave activism, you know, funded with a, you know, a, a ulterior agenda. So, just something to think about. But I'm not gonna, you know, not gonna call Rachel Nichols a a racist or anything like that. She asked questions that any other human being would ask. When they're put in the same position. That's simple. I don't care because she's white. And we want to sit up there and put all this propaganda that all white people are bad and all of this stuff. And if you're defending them, oh, you must be some tap dancers. Man, cut, cut that shit out. Cut that shit out, man. Because anybody that's pushing that, pushing that, you know, all every single black person is oppressed and all white people are bad and all racist and this and that. And they're just pushing the uh, big guys, the the supremacists, they're pushing their agenda. They're the ones that's pushing their agenda. The ones who are more free thinkers and, you know, examine the gray areas. Those are the ones that get pushed over to the side. The ones that deal with nuance. Those are the ones that get put on the back burner because we're going to ask questions and we're going to comprehend all the details. We're also going to look in the mirror and understand that we want to move. We're going to hold somebody to the same standards that we would hold ourselves. So when somebody else says says or does something, we ask ourselves, how would we react if it was us or we were doing that? And would we want a person to react to us in the same way, no matter what the color of our skin or anything, any of that is. We deal with people on the content of their character. And I just don't see it in this. So let me know what y'all think in the comment section. I've spoken long enough. Uh, tell me what you think. Is Rachel Nichols, is she wrong? Is she right? Is she a racist? Am I cape caping for her? All that bullshit. Let me know. Uh, I will holler at y'all later. Peace.